Sometimes things happen to us. We don't ever tell nobody or very few people. Well, I think everybody's probably had at least one of them experiences in their lifetime. And with this one that I'm thinking about now happened when I was 17 years old. Uh, I was not alone. My best friend was with me. We've been friends for 50 years. And what we would do when we were kids, when we first started driving, we don't, we love fishing. So we, you know, on the weekends, man, 17, 18 years old. Well, this was before I went in the army and I went in at 17. So this would have been the summer before I went in the army. Uh, we'd love to go fishing. We'd load up the poles and, and, you know, midnight, we'd start heading to the lake and we had a place we'd go fishing most of the time, uh, in, you know, south of Tulsa, east of Tulsa, actually, uh, Spavanaugh Lake, Spavanaugh Creek, but it was right by Grand Lake. It's one of Oklahoma's biggest lakes. And that was a good little spot to go. You could pull in there, you know, it was a campground. I had like a 69 Cutlass uh, at that time when we first started going there. And, you know, those things were big enough. I'd lay in the front seat and sleep. And he'd get in the back seat and sleep. And when the sun came up, we'd grab the fishing poles, go down there to the dam. They had a little dam that was built in like 19 in the 20s. And you could walk, you could actually walk across it. It was a low water dam. And we would get in the little pools in the streams and fish and catch catch bass catch you know bluegill gar you know you never knew what you'd catch or how good a lot of times the fishing sucked but we'd just go you know was get out of town that kind of thing so one weekend i've got this crazy idea we're gonna go down to the kaimishi mountains which is in Southern Oklahoma, not far from where I'm at now. The same type of terrain, only these mountains are pretty good size. We never been down there. So I'm you know, there was no there was no Google Maps back then. There was no GPS. There was none of that. This is 1983. So we get a map. Everybody had a map in their vehicle, you know. How many people do today? Probably not many. So I get on the map and we're looking, you know, it's probably midnight before we even took off. We're in, we're in Tulsa. So I kind of figure out, you know, we kind of got to make it down this way, the Fort Smith area. And then, but man, I don't know. So we plotted out a route and start driving and, and we drove for a couple hours. And at that time I was not in the, <laughs> I had a, I think I had a Chevette. A 1979 or 80 Chevy Chevette. That little dude went everywhere. And I think that's what we were in, but I can't be sure. I'm pretty sure. Doesn't matter. So we finally get down to where we think the exit is. And it really, you know, you, you take a highway. It's a two-lane road down there. So we got off. And we're heading in a direction where we think we're going to go fishing. It's still pitch black. You can't see nothing. So we're pretty much flying blind. And, oh, my God, did we get lost. We had no idea where we were. But, you know, we had all night to find it. And we're on some gravel road and there's nothing man there you ain't seeing nothing outside it's so dark you can't tell if you're in the mountains and you can't tell if you're in the middle of a pasture or what it's just a dirt road and we're driving around and and he's got the map light on trying to figure out where we're at well we can't figure out it, where we're at cuz we didn't know where we was to figure out where we was at <laughs> And we were young, not stupid, just young. And we ain't never been down to that part of Oklahoma. Uh, but anyway, this is the weird part. And, and I swear to God, this is the truth. 
and I still can't explain. We just talked, I talked with him a couple of years ago about this, and no explanation. So we're driving down this road thinking, well, we'll stay on this. All roads lead somewhere, right? Uh, so we're, pull, we're pulling through what looks like a town, but there's no street lights like you would see in a normal small town. There's houses, but they're all boarded up like a ghost town. This is what we were going through. It was like an old ghost town. There was a store. It had two gas pumps in the front, and it had uh, like a Coke, old Coke sign. Original, not not repainted or any of that. Uh, we could see that. With, I had the bright lights on. We had flashlights, and we're flashing, you know. There ain't nobody in this town. There's no cars, just abandoned ones that are broke down and in old abandoned house yards. So we we're, we soon get out of that because there's nothing there. And out of the blue, and I don't know, I see this like red light about the size of a, it seemed like about the size of a softball just in front of the bumper of the car. But the car is moving. And it's the distance never changes from that red light to the to the windshield. I mean, it stays ahead of the hood, but you can't tell that it's moving because we're moving and it's staying there. And and we're both looking at it, and you know we're like, what the hell is that? And he thinks, well, maybe a rock or something hit the one of the lights, and it's reflecting. It was a clear night. There was no fog, nothing to reflect to. So we stopped the car. As soon as we open the door and get out, the, the light's gone. So we assume it was some kind of reflection from the car because it, it's staying the same distance as we're moving. And, and then we're looking around. There's no red light. And so we, we didn't find anything. And just kind of shook it off, you know, as a reflection on the glass or something. So we get back in, and we're driving, and we're driving. We go about two, three miles, and there it is again. Same spot. And we're racking our brains trying to figure out what this light is. And just when we were getting ready to stop again, the red light shoots up about 20 feet in the air, and it's gone. And then I can see in the rearview mirror... It's behind the car. Keeping pace. Keeping pace with the car as we're driving. And so I, I told him, I said, dude, turn around. He turns around. He sees it, you know, not through the mirror with his own eyes. And so I stop the car and it stops. And we're not getting out again. At this point, <laughs> we don't know what the heck it is. And they didn't have lasers back then. Okay, nobody had lasers or that could mess with you. This was not a flashlight because we're going down the road. Nobody's flashlight in 1983 could keep up with a car. And I mean, what? There's nothing for it to reflect on. So we just we keep going. I hit it again. We keep going, and then all of a sudden, this thing shoots forward, way ahead of the car. And it's going from side to side, up and down, and all kinds of crazy stuff, man. And we, neither one of us would would, would admit it to each other. We were terrified. Trust me. We were terrified. We had no clue what this was. And we're in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. And so finally we run. It, it's still there, but it's very faint. And then all of a sudden it was gone. We never seen it again. And then we come across to like a stop sign and, and here is a paved road. So getting off of a dirt road to a paved road is a, is a good thing, right? So we take that paved road and we finally find like a, it's a campground and we pull in there and man, we're sitting there and we're talking about it for an hour and uh, we just nod off in the, in the car seats. And we get up that morning. And <laughs> we are in an environment like we've never seen before. Never. You know, because you know, we're from up in Tulsa. And this is a mountainous region. 
We're looking around, man, and there are snakes in the trees. There's snakes. I don't know what. It, I've never seen this again in my life. A place so infested with snakes. And they were like green, green snakes, black snakes. It's we were just talking about, you know. I mean, not hundreds of them. You would look in a tree. If you would look in each tree, you would find a snake. And there was a few snakes on the ground. I've never seen such a collection of snakes in my entire life. And then they were in trees. I, I still, to this day, haven't seen snakes hanging out in trees down here. I don't know if it was some... We were there at a certain time where it was mating season for them or whatever. I don't know. But, man... We're like, we're not fishing here. <laughs> so we found another place, fished for a while, didn't catch a dang thing. And, you know, in the daytime, we, we could look at the map and figure out where we was. And I don't know how we got off, you know, on the road like we did, but we were not far the whole time from a highway. But we just taken like an old, an old road. Probably ain't nobody hardly ever drives down it. But I always, you know, I think of that every now and then, what that light could be. And a UFO, I don't, man, I don't know. It would be a small one. They'd be little bitty aliens about the size of a worm. But I never could figure out what that was. And I'd love to see a flying saucer, something like that. At least that you can halfway explain. But just like a softball-sized red light that seems to have a mind of its own, that one's hard to explain. I don't think he ever told anybody. I never told anybody, really. Maybe a few people. I don't know. But it was strange. And I'll be curious to see if anybody's had anything like that happen. But, yeah, it's not going to happen on I-44 or any kind of a freeway. But who knows what it was, man. But they didn't have the technology back then to do anything for anybody to mess with you like that. We really don't even have something that, that could do what that did today. But very weird. Yeah, well, I mean, it was kind of like a drone, but they didn't have drones back then. But you could probably do that with a drone now. That's the kind of motions it was making. I don't know, man. Anyway, I got tons of stories, but not always that weird, but I've traveled this country, so I got a lot of road stories. Uh, let me know if y'all like stories like that, but that's that's one that, yeah, you just, if you would have told people that then, they'd have thought you was crazy, you know. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.